guys, it's Whitney at the Holiday Homestead. Um, I am inside today because it is cold <laughs> outside. And of course I know that doesn't really prepare me for Alaska, but it's cold and I'm just gonna stay in. Anyway, so I am making uh, use of my day by rendering some fat. So I, um, we recently butchered one of our pigs and uh, we got a ton of lard off of this pig. It was amazing. Our tallow anyways off the pig. So um, we are kind of slowly working through it. Um, I put a lot of it in the freezer because I wasn't ready to uh, render it just yet. And so I slowly am working through it and I'm down to like the last like four or five bags. I'm finally getting it done because when I uh, render it, what I do is I... Um, <laughs> What I do is I, uh, I put it in jars and I can it. And so it helps it, it helps uh, get all of it out of the freezer, which is always a good thing. Um, but then it also makes it easy to, you know, use when I want. And I usually have a jar of it sitting on the side of my stove that I use for cooking. Basically, I don't really use cooking oil like vegetable oil or canola oil anymore. Um, it's primarily just this um, lard that I've been rendering. So anyway, um, so yeah, so... I'm staying inside and doing that because it is really cold out. I will show you. There's husband. He's out getting little bits of firewood. <laughs> anyway, so, um, okay, so let me show you what I'm working on here. So this is a bag um, that was from the freezer and it's just, it's just old, you know, fat. And this is just straight off the animal. This is how it looks. Um, and pretty much it just, um, it's just, oh, here we go, it's just fat, you know, it's just big clumps. And so what I'm going to do is chop it up. Um, I don't really like chop it into the smallest pieces. Um, I usually make like pieces this big. So, you know, two inch, one inch, something like that kind of chunks. Um, I've got a second bag here that I'm working on and I'm just going to keep going with this until I fill up my, uh, fill up my pot. So... Let's see how that looks. Okay, so guys, um, I've got my fat here and we're just finishing up cutting. So when you get the fat off of the animal, it, it looks like this. There's some that are kind of firm to the touch and some, like this piece that's more like kind of squishy and soft. Um, so I usually separate those types of fat where um, the hard fat will go in one rendering and then I'll do what I call the soft fat in the other one and the soft fat I've noticed um, it's really unstable at room temperature so it'll be more liquidy um, which in my for my use is actually really useful because I can pour it into um, like a um, biscuit batter or biscuit mix when I'm making biscuits uh, I don't have to like spoon it out, you know, and then put it in the um, in the flour. I can just pour it in. It's good for making bread because it pours really easily. You don't have to like scoop it and it's not super hard. Um, but then the hard fat, um, the stuff that's more firm, is it can be a bit harder to um, get it out of the jar at room temperature. It, depending, on, depending on like how you keep your home, um, it can be kind of like kind of scooping ice cream almost. Um, which is fine. It just takes a few minutes just to warm it up if you're going to pour it into something. Um, but I really like using the soft fat because it is super easy. You basically just use it like you would cooking oil um, in terms of just like pouring it in. Um, but hard fat's good too because you can just spoon it into your pan, into a hot pan, and it'll melt in seconds. It's really not a big difference. Um, anyway, so, um, so the pieces that I'm using, or I'm cutting into just like, like I would cut this into three sections. Um, and mainly, it's not so important um, the size or the shape or whatever of the pieces, but basically you just don't want a huge clump that doesn't render down as quickly as the smaller pieces because then it starts to burn in the, in the, the oil. Um, so what you want is like evenly sized pieces just so that they all kind of release the oil around the same time. Because um, I've done it the other way where it's kind of through clumps in there and what happens is um, it just gets it's like you have a ton of oil and then you just have this like super soggy half rendered down piece that's kind of gross and it kind of makes your oil a little bit milky looking and it's not great so anyway it's better just to have everything generally the same size i mean so like this piece i'm just going to cut it into half so you can come in and kind of see 
So this is what I would consider kind of full. Um, and there are some bits with meat um, still on them. I'm not too worried about it because it does render down pretty well. Um, and I'll just cut up this piece. Um, the, so the meat will stay, um, well, it actually kind of makes almost like pork rinds a little bit. Um, and um, our chickens like the pieces of meat, so that's kind of cool. Um, and sometimes I'll eat them too, but they're kind of greasy. Anyway, so yeah. So basically that's that. All right, so let's go. Now I like to put this on the wood stove. Um, it's, it's, I guess it's just preference, but I actually prefer to um, kind of slowly render this down. Um, a lot of times when you're rendering on a stove, the heat can get so high that it can actually um, kind of burn your oil where it will, um, it kind of turns a darker brown color, like a dark tan. And what you really want is what I prefer is a very light, almost clear oil, like a pale yellow to kind of a golden yellow color, um, but not much darker than that. And I've noticed the stove, I have, we have a gas stove, um, it still is almost too much heat for it. I have used a crock pot in the past um, and those work beautifully, like just beautifully. Um, and if you put it on like a low setting or even high to begin with and then low, um, it does do a really good job of rendering, but my thing is when I put it in the crock pot, I tend to forget about it and then it does start to burn and become this dark, like, um, almost like a dark gold brown kind of color for the oil. It's still perfectly usable. I mean, it's not going to ruin it. It just has a bit more of a porky flavor than I like. So anyway, so I like to put mine on the wood stove. So I'm going to use this and my lid. This place is a mess. <laughs> well, we're packing. Alright. And that's it. And that's going to sit there for uh, a few hours, depending on how hot Jared gets the fire. So when you're um, rendering, especially on like a wood stove or something, you want to just keep track of the, how the fat is boiling down. Um, so you know we've got our wood stove kind of hot here, and you can kind of hear the fat bubbling. So if you just listen, yeah, so you can hear um, that it's already starting. And so when you take your lid off, you're going to get a lot of water on top. It's fine to have the water um, dip down in there or um, drip into the, the pot because it's all going to evaporate out. So what you want to do is always stir. Ooh, and actually let's see. My stove is really hot. I actually singed a little bit of my fat. That's okay, but it's not ideal. Um, I probably should have stirred this like 15 minutes ago. You can see like that chunk there and that's actually kind of a big piece but that got a little bit singed. So, I mean, it's fine. It'll still come out really good, um, but you definitely want to stir. When you start hearing the bubbling happen, um, you want to stir it regularly because see now, I'm keeping anything else from sticking to the bottom. And also, I'm kind of circulating this, this fat that's already started to render. You can see, oops. So that is what we're going for and that is already started to form. This little has a little bit too much water in it to take it out right now, because you see our chunks of fat are still white. Um, what'll happen is it'll start to turn kind of like, um, the look kind of like, like pork rinds, but they'll also float. So when there's enough oil in here for these little, these little globs, they'll start floating and turn kind of a dark tan color. And that's when you know, you've got enough oil in there to start pulling some out. Um, but this right now is just a little bit, has still too much water in it. Anyway, but it's starting and that's a good thing. This is happening. So we're just gonna let this continue once you feel like you've stirred it up enough that there's nothing sticking to the bottom anywhere. We're just gonna close this up and let it keep working. Hey guys, okay, so um, here I've got a nice clean mason jar 
and I actually moved the pot over. This is the really hot side of our wood stove. And so I moved it over to a little bit cooler side because it was getting a little too hot and I was getting kind of crusty edges on stuff. Um, so all I'm gonna do is show you guys basically the color of the oil at this stage. And then um, I, a little bit later I'll show you guys how I actually like can it and preserve it and all that. So, um, all right, so we're gonna take off the lid here. And you definitely wanna be careful because Keep in mind, it's boiling hot oil. <laughs> so try not to uh, have a lot going on near you when you're doing this. Okay, I'm gonna take that off. And so you can see all of the pieces of fat are now floating in oil. And this oil is really, really clear. It looks like something you'd find in the store, like vegetable oil. Um, and so I can show you a little better the clarity of this. And you can just kind of skim off the top and get the, um, the oil without getting the chunks uh, of fat. Because those chunks are still working. They're still breaking down um, and rendering into oil. And so you can kind of see how clear this is. Now normally when I'm doing this, I have a funnel with a little strainer um, and that's what I use to ladle, like I ladle the oil into that and then uh, it comes out nice and clean down the bottom and I catch all the little bits. Um, but it's really hard to do that <laughs> when I've got, um, when I'm trying to film. So, <clears throat> so basically, Basically, that is the color of the oil. Um, now, sometimes I have gotten something a little bit lighter than this. Um, it just depends. My fire's a little bit warm right now, um, so I think I got just a bit warmer, but, um, but this is about the color that you can expect. Um, sometimes you get a little bit clearer, but this is really still very good, and I know you can't like smell through the camera, but it doesn't smell porky. It doesn't smell like a pork chop. Um, and with some other fats, um, especially if they're not rinsed really well, you do get kind of that pork chop smell. Um, and that's fine if you're doing like a savory dish, it's not a big deal. What I would do if I got something that smelled a little bit too porky, I would mark on there that this one uh, smells porky and that I would just use it for um, stir fries or, you know, cooking eggs or something else like that. Um, but when I've got an oil that like this, guys, shh that is really clear and it smells really nice, um, I would use this in like baking and stuff because this is stuff that is not going to leave that porky flavor in breads and um, cakes and stuff, which of course you don't want because <laughs> that would be weird. Anyway, um, so, um, so yeah, so what I would do, what I'm gonna do is strain this so I can get all those little bits. You see those little crumbs and that's totally fine. They're just little crumbs down the bottom. Um, you just want to uh, filter all those out and, um, and then of course you can process the rest of it or you can leave them in. Not a big deal. It really isn't either way. Um, I just like to be able to know I'm scooping up just the oil and not getting little, little bits, especially in something that I'm going to use for like a bread or um, cupcakes or something. Okay. So um, this is what it looks like when we're straining it. So I use my canning funnel on top and then I um, just pour whatever I've got into this and it just strains out the little bits of kind of fried fat and little extra bits. Um, but what you end up with is a really nice clear oil. I mean, a few little grains are gonna get through here and there, but overall you have a nice cooking oil that's ready to use. And speaking of which, I'll use it right now because we're gonna do um, some fried rice. So I'm just adding this just like I would a regular cooking oil and then so yeah so it really does cook a lot like regular oil um, like, a, like a vegetable oil or something. Um, it doesn't burn off too quickly and it doesn't um, smoke a lot. I have used it for um, like pan frying 
Um, I made tortillas with it the other day, and they came out, or yesterday, actually today, that was today. Anyway, it turned out really good. Um, and so it's just, it's a nice oil. Um, and then I do, when I need to get rid of it, um, or when it's kind of, there's still enough in the pan to use, but not quite enough to um, cook with, um, I keep a little pan and that lets it, lets the solids kind of drain to the bottom, or not drain, but like settle at the bottom. And then um, the fat that is still good to use kind of sits on top. But this is kind of like seconds oil, it's not the best stuff. Um, so I'll use that sometimes. Um, but the best stuff when I'm cooking is for sure using um, straight from a nice clean jar. That's it. Hey guys, um, okay, so we have finished rendering um, our lard and we have a jar. Now, depending on how much um, fat you're rendering, you're gonna have, you know, several jars, hopefully. Um, but just for this video, I'm just gonna do one so you can see it. Um, so I use my quart jars for um, my, my rendering because we use this all the time. Like we use this as our regular cooking oil and we go through it so quickly. Um, and so if you're gonna use whatever jar you use for your, um, your actual um, storage of your lard, you wanna use a wide mouth because it's easy. I use a spatula, um, like a little, one of these little dealies. There we go. I use this. And um, as it cools, it hardens, and it's really easy to get the um, lard out of the jar when it's a nice wide mouth. And when you have a little scoop or spatula like this or a little spoon or something, um, it just makes it easier to get it, um, to make it usable. Anyway, um, so we've already strained out all the little, the little bits, you know, and it's nice and clean and ready to be preserved. Now, I will say, um, when you are canning anything, you always want to go with your best practices. So whatever um, source for information you find that you really want to follow, go for it, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, we use this method, I've used this for, oh gosh, uh, probably six months now, and we're fine. <laughs> so I will show you what we do, but by all means, you know, you want to look online and find, um, you know, the best storing practices, the best rendering practices that we really can trust. Anyway, so, um, so what we do here is, um, you know, when, when we're pouring this into the jar, it's going to be really hot. And the best time to finish processing this whole thing is right when it is hot. Um, this has gotten a little bit cooler, so you can see how it's a little bit cloudy in there. Um, and that's totally fine. That's just part of the cooling process. Um, this is going to cool to white. And so, um, so if your jar is super piping hot and your oil is super piping hot, then you can go ahead and um, can the jar. So you basically would just have your lids. Um, where am I here? Do, do, do. Well, this is just a regular mouth lid, but basically you have your band and your lid and you, you do the normal thing where you'd boil it for a little bit or simmer it, and then um, dry them off. Make sure whatever lid you put on is totally dry because um, you don't want any water inside your oil. That's gonna facilitate bacteria, basically. Um, so you'll you know finish that and you'll put your lid on. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no, first. Um, you'll put this in the oven. There we go, <laughs> hang on here. So you'll have your, your lid simmering and you'll put the jar on a cookie sheet, something, you know, like a thick cookie sheet. You don't want to put it on like a, something thin because as this heats up, it might warp. And if it twists and warp, you, if you're using small jars, um, they might tip and that would be terrible. So you want to use like a kind of heavy duty kind of pan, um, something that you know will not warp when it gets hot. Anyway, and then you'll put your jars on it and you're going to put it in the oven. Um, I cook mine or heat up mine to um, 370 degrees. So I use a candy thermometer and you just want to dip it in one of the jars and just make sure it's hot. Um, and I usually do 350 degrees and it usually takes about 35 minutes or so, but you really want to check the, the temperature instead of just timing it. Um, so you want to make sure that it's 370 degrees. Um, and I usually let it sit at 370 for maybe 10 minutes or so. So once I get up to that, that temperature, I'll just let it sit in the oven for a bit longer. And then, once it's out, then um, I would, I'll take the whole tray very carefully and set it on a trivet or something that's really sturdy. 
um, and then put your very clean and totally dry lids on the jars. Um, and you just, I mean, use an oven mitt, use a towel or something so that you can twist down the lid pretty well. I will say the band does get hot, so you have to be quick. Um, so this is one that I've done um, earlier. And so this is what the, the finished product looks like. It is, it is canned, <laughs> it is ready to go. Um, we've used um, rendered tallow in just about every type of cooking, baking, um, that we've done for the past few months and it's it tastes really good it's delicious um, and it definitely uh, saves on oil for sure which is wonderful so anyway and now that it is canned it is totally shelf stable so we store this stuff in a back bedroom closet and um, it's a room that is away from the wood stove it is um, dark unless we turn the light on in there there's no windows and it's generally, I want to say, 10 to 15 degrees cooler in that room than the rest of the house. Um, and, we, and that's why we chose that room, because it's nice and cool. So wherever you're keeping your regular canned stuff, you want to um, keep your, your lard in there too. Um, anyway, so that's basically it. One other thing I will say, though, about the whole rendering process that I probably should have mentioned earlier. Um, we render in cast iron pots. This is what I use normally for cooking anyway, um, but specifically for rendering, I only use cast iron. Um, one of the reasons is because um, the heat transfer in cast iron is really great. It distributes the heat all the way around, all of the metal gets hot, and it kind of um, makes the, the temperature um, even throughout, but it also heats slowly. So especially when you're rendering, you want to make sure that your pan is not super scorching hot right away because it will burn your, your chunks of fat. Um, but also, just in general, when it's, when it's rendering down, you want a nice, even heat distribution. Um, so when you're rendering, I highly recommend using cast iron. Uh, if you can't get a hold of cast iron, use a pot, maybe like a ceramic pot that has a nice thick bottom to it so it doesn't just like blast with the heat and make it um, scorch. So anyway, so there's that. And actually, I'll show you our collection of uh, cast iron that my husband put on our shelf. So here you go, ta-da! And this is a pot that, um, actually all of these were either thrift store finds or garage sale finds or gifts from fantastic people who just love what we do and just wanted to give a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, then my husband built this really awesome shelf. With all this cool stuff. So anyway guys, thank you so much. I hope um, that this helps you render some fat soon.